the store and pay off several times as much at the end, in the end already on an overpriced uh, merchandise because their credit line had no cash reserve. They bought top of the line clothing and housewares to give us gifts in order to keep up the appearance, but confessed that they would never be able to afford to pay off these things for themselves. As a cashier, I knew before they got to the register which customers would use charge on their purchases. They were the ones with the tired, sad expressions. The ones who were obviously not enjoying the holiday season or anything else. I felt guilty suggesting purchases. The staff I trained at the store was instructed to suggest the highest uh, in the price options and sell by pushing low payments while never divulging the number of payments. And putting up this selection on their credit card account, I knew I was making their lives worse. I even felt bad giving discounts to entice first-time credit card buyers because I knew the merchandise they were buying would not last as long as the payments. The giddy look on newlyweds' faces when they first discovered they had more buying power than cash looked uh, sickeningly familiar. That was bad news. The good news is, for the first time in years, I made up my mind to get off the merry-go-round forever. I am now going in the opposite direction, out of the hole instead of deeper in. Since the beginning of the year, I have devised and stuck with a two-year financial recovery plan. And I'm beginning to see real results. Ironically, I'm beginning to feel the same things I felt years ago when I first got my credit card. Power, in charge, secured, and prepared for emergencies. Only this time, it's based on reality. Pretty interesting, isn't it? I think that... Uh, as we look at that lady's story, um, it's interesting to see that um, there are some bad habits just there. And it doesn't make someone a bad person if they follow a bad habit. Because you know what? Every one of us have fallen into a bad habit. But the thing of it is, is that uh, we need to realize that there can be that sense of unhappiness sense of not being in control, in control. It, that sense of being bound because of financial restrictions. And we're much like Esau. In a moment, we find ourselves feeling appeased. But in a lifetime, we find ourselves feeling strapped <laughs> and thinking, why did I do that? I want to share a few things this evening. Uh, there are some that will uh, be bound really in a position where they will be in debt forever. You know, uh, debt can be a terrible thing. And uh, I want to look at some credit card companies and what they do. And, uh, uh, you know, you may feel that somehow that person with that credit card, and I've seen young people particularly, um, uh, I see them, you know, they're coming out of college or coming out of Bible school, they're coming and they're starting, and it's tough, it's a struggle. And our society teaches us, I remember my mom and dad saying this a lot, you know, um, you know, we didn't get what we have overnight. It took, it took us our lives to work for this. Um, but the younger generation wants today what took mom and dad a lifetime and years to achieve. And so that is kind of the ideology that is promoted and pushed. But with that, you're thinking, oh, there's, there's this freedom of having these nice things and these commodities and, and the comfortableness of life. But they find that just as quick as it came, it quickly goes, and they're left with just the opposite feeling. Now, I want to look at some numbers, and I'm not a banker, or I should get Sister Tina up here and let her throw these numbers, and she could probably do it faster and probably explain it better, but I found myself challenged as I looked at these numbers. I want you to say that you had a credit card 
and get a better one. A credit card with a balance of $2,000. All right, you owe $2,000 on this credit card. Now, your credit card, and they don't always like to tell you this, they buy you in at a very low uh, interest rate, and then it bounces up. So let's say the interest rate on your credit card is 19.8%. Now, it is your credit card, and they tell you that the important thing for you to do is they want you to pay off 3% of the outstanding balance on your credit card of $2,000. Now, I want you to follow this math. It's not, you don't have to be a mathematical genius to figure this out. And so, here we go. Let's figure that it is going to be at $60. That 3% that you need to uh, make your monthly payment on, on an outstanding balance. Now, $60. That's all that is required. And if you make the minimum payment for each month uh, that they are asking you to, and obviously uh, it, it, it will change, if you make the minimum payment on that each month, this $2,000 purchase, how many months, I just want you to think about this for a moment, how many months do you think uh, it would take you to pay this off if you never make another purchase. Now, $2,000, here's your interest, there's your percentage you're paying, and they're going to send you a bill every month to pay, and how long do you think it's going to take you to pay off that $2,000? Ten years. Someone else? Well, Sister Ashley, you about hit it right. It will take you 19 years and four months to pay this off. Wow, $2,000? Now, you're thinking, Brother Seville, but $60, but you've got to consider your interest that you're paying. I want you to think about this. The interest that you're going to pay on this, this loan of $2,000, the interest is this. The interest is $4,318.12. Now, can I just tell you something else? You've got to add these together and your total payment of paying that off after 20 years, your money for, for $2,000 worth of expenses that you paid for almost 20 years ago, you have just paid it off and you've paid a grand total of $6,318.12. How many of you think that that's a good deal? <laughs> the credit card company is smiling. Yeah. And someone's probably even laughing while you're crying. Yeah, well, that's the problem, Sister Vicki. That is the problem. And if you are a preferred a customer or a valued customer of that credit card company, you know those who max out their credit card become preferred or valued customers? I think I'd rather be a valued person somewhere else and value what God has given to me and take care of it. Now, it is unlikely, really, as Sister Vicki, you said, the, most people are going to keep adding and adding to that. And, and the answer is, it will never be paid off. That is a terrible place to be. To live your life and find yourself at the end of your life passing on debt like that to your children. That's a bad place to be. And let's just, I want you to think about this. As we look at this, and that is perma debt, if I may say, uh, perma debt for sure. Let's go back and let's look at this same example. If you have a $2,000 credit card at the same rate, the 19.8% uh, 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 interest rate, and you continue to every month re 
regardless of when the payments go down, if you decide that I am going to pay this off every month at $60, how soon, instead of the 19 years, four months, how much sooner do you think you can pay it off? If you keep it at $60, even when your payment goes down low. Because after a period of time, you pay on it, you're not adding to it, you're going to drop your payment down low. Well, I'll tell you the answer. The answer is going to be 48 months. 49, 49 months, really. Uh, and so, let's look at it this way. What if you committed to pay $90 a month on this same credit card? You can actually pay that credit card off if you did it at $90 a month in just 28 months. If you committed to pay $100 a month instead of $60 a month, you could pay that same credit card off in two years. So it comes down to this. It comes down to, hey, I can do this 17 years sooner than, than what the credit card company gives me. And so it's amazing to see what compounded interest can do for your financial debt. That's a bad word, compounded interest, isn't it? It's a change of guess. So as we look at that, I want us to think about some things this evening. It is important that we do live and a budget. It's important that we watch how we do spend our money because it can bring us into bondage. It can rob us of joy. As the lady's story that we shared, it can rob us of relationships, her family, her friends. It can rob us of our time. It can rob us of a lot of things. And so is God concerned about our finances? Sure He is. And should we ask God to help us with our finances? Sure we should. Because it can bring just an unhealthy lifestyle to us. And then what it involves is this. It involves a detailed plan. The same way you can five and ten dollar yourself in debt, you can five and ten dollar yourself out of debt. It's important not to be spontaneous. You know, uh, when you are shopping. And, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I, I it's, it's interesting to watch Walmart, isn't it? Can you ever see those little kids pitching fit and their moms and dads give them whatever they want because they cry? And that's a bad place to be. And even when it comes to uh, our money, we need to realize while we should not live in a state of instant gratification. We should realize that sometimes even if there is debt, that being in a position of sticking with the goal and keeping on. The goals are easy to come up with. The sticking with is the tough part. Any of you ever noticed that? The goals are easy, but the sticking with it is the tough part. But asking God, to help us. God wants to bless us. And sometimes we hear preachers, and I, I'm very much against it, when you hear and it's being preached more and more, but this uh, uh, instant gratification, this that God wants to bless, and, and uh, you send me money, and God will bless your finances. And my wife and I recently visited well, it's been a little while, maybe a year ago, visited the church with a, a friend and the pastor was preaching about how that, uh, uh, you know, God uh, you know, God wants to uh, just keep it increasing, increasing, increasing. You know, I don't buy into that. God does bless us with finances, but God wants us to be careful of how we use them. How many people would have 4,000 more in their pocket had they used their